Welcome, Three Gates. This is Kathleen Pearl. On Erev Rosh Hashanah, that is the evening beginning, the day of Rosh Hashanah, the Hebrew day begins at sunset and goes through sunset the next day. I had three visions at the end of a time of intercession where the dread of the Lord came upon us. Could not pray our own prayers, our own thoughts. We needed just to pray in the spirit and this heavy weight of dread. And at the end of the prayer session, I had three visions. The first one, I was closing a large wrought iron vertical rolling fence gate close across a driveway, an entryway into a large estate or a great piece of property. The second vision, I saw a large, very high iron gate with a right and a left levers, doors, the right and the left. I did not touch this gate. A sovereign force closed the gates. It was an in inner gate in the garden to an estate. The third gate was a large iron gate with spikes on the bottom that came down closing the entrance over a castle, an estate castle. I also did not touch this gate it was closed by a sovereign hand. The first driveway gate, the main entrance, is the way in was being closed off for preparation to keep out invaders or others from coming in, from entering in. It was a way, a, a highway, a, a driveway. The second gate, the right and left doors, were the estate gates. They were the actual former gates before entering into uh, the estate or the castle. And the right and the left doors were the issues of righteousness and the left was the issues of wickedness. There was closure, it was a sovereign hand closing out. And the third gate, the drawbridge or the castle gate, was the uh, self-defense me uh, mechanisms or closure, these are all gates of closure, that sovereign, I didn't touch it, a sovereign presence, a sovereign force brought down the gate for preservation. Just as in the days of Noah, the Lord said, it would be, so would it be at the time of the coming of the Lord. And Noah, when he went into the Ark of the Covenant, the Lord shut the door. The Lord closed the door. Let's again examine the first gate in light of some of the scriptures. In the first gate, I myself, that is, I took the action to physically close the gate, the sliding gate, to, to put it in place, and this speaks of I, me, my person, acting on information in order to preserve and to keep out intruders. And he set porters at the gates of the house of the Lord, that none which was unclean in anything should enter in. That is to say that in my house, in my community, in my uh, it's, um, state or nation, I act and make the moves to close off and set a boundary that none which was unclean and anything should enter in. That this is up to me to do this physical act in order to preserve the integrity of the land. So I said, blessed is the man that hears me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. Proverbs 8, 34. And who sits at the gates? Who sits at the gates and determines those are the nobles of the land? 
And God says in Deuteronomy 7, 2, among you with any of your gates, which the Lord has given you, man or woman, and has wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord your God in transgressing his covenant. That means that his covenant is far above any man's laws or, ju or uh, judgments or statutes. That the laws of man's and nations must come under the laws of Almighty God and be subjected to them as they are executed or they are lawless because God is the perfect judge and lawgiver. Now, that's Deuteronomy 17.2 and then Deuteronomy 17.5. So when you shall bring forth that man or that woman which has committed wicked things into your gates, even that man or woman, you shall stone them till they die. And... Deuteronomy 17, 18, if there arises a matter too hard for you in judgment between blood and blood and between plea and plea and between stroke and stroke, being a matter of controversy within the gates, then you shall arise and go into the place where God chooses you. And God says that you are to, in Deuteronomy 31, 12, gather the people together, men and women, children, and the stranger that is within your gates, those that live in your realm, okay? that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law. Which law? The law of God. Not law that has been twisted or perverted where right is wrong and black is white and male is female. And that, that the ju judges pervert justice and the attorneys in order to extend their vineyards in their lands and to add on to them. To exploit those who have disputes and to take bribes in the houses of justice. Judges 5 8. So they chose new God, then there was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? And God says, when you don't keep him as God, there's war in the gates. And when you don't keep his commandments at the gates, there is war in your gates. They are not shut off. And they are not preserved from the enemies, your enemies, coming through your gates. Now let us go to the inward gates of the property or the estate. The place is not quite yet, but into the garden where you dwell. In this one there were a two-levered gate, a right door and a left door that closed shut. And it was closed shut by a sovereign hand. So once you have committed to doing God's will and his commandments and not have any other gods in your gates, you make that act of will to close that gate, then God preserves you and his hand closes the two levered gate, the gate to the garden, the inward gates. You keep the commandments of God. Righteousness open unto you the gates that righteous nation which keeps truth may enter in. Isaiah 26 2. Psalm 118 19. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. Or close the gates the, of wickedness and God will keep me. He is, he is the keeper of my uh, uh, soul. Unless God keeps the city, the watchman labors in vain. Evil, the evil bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. Proverbs 14, 19. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing water, there they shall rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel, then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates, and they are delivered, it says, from war, and they are kept, because they are doing the righteous acts of the Lord. Therefore the Lord himself will keep them. Judges 5.11 Zechariah 16, These are the things you shall do. Speak you every man truth to his neighbor, execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. These are the these are the acts of the righteousness, to do righteousness, to execute judgment and mercy and truth and righteousness. And God then closes and keeps you. Unless God keeps you, you labor in vain. The sovereign hand of the Lord is your tower and your refuge and your strength and your exceedingly great reward.
And let us again look at the third gate. The third gate was came from above. From above the gate came down. It is God, the Lord of heaven, who brings down the a restraint. Okay? He brings down the gates of brass and the bars of iron and shuts them by his sovereign hand and keeps your life and keeps your castle. He's your strong tower and your refuge. He the Lord Yeshua, Jesus has the keys that shut and no man can open and open that no man can shut. He has the keys of death and hell. He is the one that subdues the nations before him and looses the kings of lo the loins of the kings. He is the one that closes the gates and he makes the crooked places straight and he closes that your your personal life from the enemy from entering in those who make the volition the willful act of at the outer gates the outer perimeter of closing by keeping god's commandments and posting them and his laws and statutes by keeping truth and righteousness in the gates then god is your defense because no man is saved by a great army but in the name of the Lord and by his, uh, those who keep covenant with him, he shall show himself strong on their behalf. Revelation 22, 11 says, He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still and behold I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city but outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bride and the morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirsts come, whoever desires, let him come of the waters of life freely. And what is the issue? Let the just be unjust, let him be unjust. Who is filthy, let him be filthy. Who is righteous, let him be righteous. Still, he is holy, let him be holy still. And this means that we make our choices to enter in to these gates. These heavenly gates.